These tears I've cried, I've cried a thousand oceans And if it seems I'm floating in the darkness well I can't believe that I would keep, keep you from flying. And so I would cry a thousand more if that's what it takes to sail you home, sail you you home I'm aware what the rules are but you know that I will roam you know that I will follow you over Silbury Hill and through the solar field you know that I will Thing a lot of you want the same songs. <laughs> it comes in handy. Let's see. Uh, 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 uh. Do you guys feel like doing some some audience participation? Some <laughs> some collective Alex Wong vocal line. This is a song called Antebellum. And it's a, it's a co-write in the truest sense. I am not a frequent co-writer. Um, I've done, I've worked on a musical called The Fourth Messenger with a wonderful playwright named Tanya Schaefer. And uh, aside from that, that enormous project in which I grew in many ways, I very seldom sit down with another person in a room to, to 
make a piece of music together. And one person that I've done that with more than anyone else is uh, my friend Alex Wong. And so we were both living in Brooklyn um, several years ago, and I had been playing around with a piece of music uh, that I liked, but I didn't really know how it all fit together or what, it, what the song was about or, or what the melody should sound like, uh, the, me the vocal melody should sound like. And I remember he sat down next to me on the piano bench and basically you know, directed the movie of the song <laughs> as I went. It was kind of fun because I would play something. He's like, yeah, play that part. And then um, and he said, and then go to that other part you were doing. I'm like, oh, you mean like straight into that? He's like, yeah, exactly. And then he would do it and he's like, and then A, and then F, and then <laughs> So it was this pretty amazing moment of him kind of taking the pieces that I come up with and stringing them together in a way that suddenly made sense. Um, so it was a pretty, pretty amazing thing for a co-writer to be able to do. So we finished the music that way in somewhat short order, and then the real task began of trying to figure out what on earth the song was about, and we went through a number of iterations. Sometimes songs are immediately about something, you know, there, there's a truth that comes with the music that has to be told in a particular way. And other times, you're more like a, um, a, a patch screenwriter or something trying to come up with <laughs> what it is that will rescue the, the story. So we went through conjoined twins separated at birth. We went through migratory birds. And none of that, all of that sounded interesting, but, <laughs> and could have been in, uh, you know, a story that we could tell, but we hadn't quite hit on exactly what would make it real for both of us, personally. And then, I don't remember exactly what he said, but he suggested something that really clicked with me because he was thinking about a relationship that he had gone through that had been really formative for him. And I was thinking about my father and um, the relationship I have with my dad. And somehow, both of those things kind of made sense all of a sudden in the, in the face of this music. And so, from these two different places, we started to write the words and it became what it is now. And instead of teaching you um, the part that comes in at the end, I think there's a critical mass of people who know it. <laughs> and, the, and the key thing to know about this is that mumbling is totally fine. <laughs> if you just kind of get the hang of what the notes are and just kind of go, yeah, it's, it blends beautifully. <laughs> so this is antebellum. <laughs> 